Hey everyone, this is Chef Luis Sanchez here at a seat at my table. St. Patrick's Day is around the corner and corned beef and cabbage seems to be the dish that we all want to make. And for some reason, including myself, we all thought it was really hard until I had a friend of mine show me how, how easy it was. So everything pretty much goes in one pot and it just has to be done in stages. So you just have to flavor your broth and then add the meat and I'm going to show you every step. So please, please stick around and I'm going to show you how to make the most awesome corned beef and cabbage dish. See you in the kitchen. Here we are, St. Patrick's Day is around the corner and we're making a classic. We're making corned beef and cabbage like I mentioned. So it is much simpler than you think. So it's basically everything is going to go in one pot and I'm going to complicate your life for the benefit of flavor and we're going to accompany it with this cool aioli that's going to be uh, heavy on the parsley so you get that awesome green color. Uh, and if you have one of these Dutch oven uh, uh, pots you can use that if not use a large stock pot and you're gonna see how simple this is so we have our uh, Corned beef this time of the year. It's readily available or you can get brisket and just clean it up But nowadays it's already sort of clean for you So we're gonna place our corned beef on the bottom of the pot and then we're gonna start adding our seasonings the, the corned beef comes with uh, this little packet and I mentioned the ingredients, what it has, but it's basically coriander seed and bay leaf and a little chili flake. So we're gonna add that in there. Like I said, I'm using it because it comes with it. A lot of times this uh, pre-packaged uh, seasonings are not very good, but this is very simple. You can just see the three ingredients are there. So definitely worth using. And then I have about a cup of carrots that we're adding in there. And uh, about a half or a third of an onion just for flavor. And then we're going to add our salt, which is right here, which is one uh, teaspoon of salt. And you can eyeball it. And then the liquid, or the bracing liquid in this case, is going to be two cups of uh, beef broth that I made, but you can just buy it. There's some great beef broths out there. There's some beef stocks that are bone. Um, that's the difference between a stock and a broth, is that the stock, you, you do it by reducing or boiling the bones. This is a broth, we're going to add two cups of that. And then the last thing we're going to add is uh, Guinness. So we have one bottle of Guinness, which is about 12 ounces. And uh, we're going to add the whole thing in there. And it's going to reduce and it's going to give it some nice color and it's going to give it a you know, hoppy flavor that we want. And when you braise something, you're not boiling it in the sense that you're covering the whole thing with it. You're just kind of covering about a third of it with it. So now we're going to bring this to the fire. We're going to bring it to a boil. Once it's at a boiling point, then we're going to lower it to a simmer and we're going to cover it. If right before you cover it, you notice uh, something that we call scum, like little foamy stuff, you just want to remove it with a spoon. And I'll show you that if that happens in our case. Uh, and that's basically it. So then if you're wondering when do we, because uh, normally, uh, this is served with this potatoes and the cabbage. We're going to add that on stages. But the first thing to do, because it's the longest thing to do, is to start cooking this meat. Because it's going to take about three hours in this case. And in the recipe, you'll see it takes about 45 minutes per pound of meat. This piece is about a little, a little under four pounds. So it should take about three hours. So we're going to bring it to the fire. We're going to turn this on. And we're doing all this in one take. So I'm going to move this lid over there. We're going to cover our, our uh, corned beef when it's ready. And I'm going to bring the blender over here, so I'm going to show you that, the aioli that we're making. So, if you've watched our show already, you're familiar with my old school blender. I actually went to Costco and debated if I should buy a newer one. And I said, why? This one still works. So I did. I'm going to plug it in. So aiolis we've made before, it's basically a mayonnaise. So in the blender we're going to add certain things to make the mayo um, kind of thick. So we're going to add a, a, what we normally add to mayo, which is an egg. So we have one egg here. And then aioli is a very garlicky driven mayonnaise, so we're going to add some garlic. And we're going to add some 
uh, in this case lime, you can add lemon or lime, and it's going to be about about a, a whole a unit of lemons or limes. But this one's a juicy lime, so I'm just going to do half, and then we add some salt, and then we're going to add parsley. It's one cup of parsley. This is a lot of parsley, so I'm just going to add some of it. That's about a cup. And this happens to be curly parsley, but Italian flat leaf parsley is fine as well. And we're going to pulse this a few times. Cool. Just to get it going a little bit. And now we're going to add a little bit of pepper and then our oil. And when you're making aioli, the most important thing is to add the oil slowly. So we're going to start at a, at a low speed on the blender and then we're going to drizzle the oil. Check it out, and we're gonna do the fork check, which means you're gonna poke with the fork and feel it has to go through, but it cannot be falling apart, and it cannot be too hard getting in there. So I cheated. I checked about 15 minutes ago, and I knew that we we're gonna be ready. So you, by all means, every hour poke at it because we're half an hour. Look at it too. If your liquid is is evaporating too much, and you need to add a little bit of liquid or whatever you gotta do. These things hold a lot of heat, so when you open them, don't be Put in your head like that. Uh, just step away from it. Open it up, and uh, and then just gently poke it. And if it goes through pretty easily, but not like easily where it's gonna fall apart, then we're almost there. So these carrots are the carrots that we used. It's almost like mush now, which is fine. But there's still enough liquid for us to cook our potatoes, which is what we're about to do now. So we're adding our potatoes. These are red potatoes that are small, like golf size. Uh, which is why we didn't cut them in half. So we just put them around um, and then we're going to cover it up and it's going to take about 20 minutes probably for these potatoes to be cooked but in about 10 minutes we're going to open it up again and we're going to add our carrots and then shortly after that we're going to add our cabbage. So 20 minutes from now everything should be good but remember don't eat it yet because your meat has to rest for a little bit. This is not the kind of thing that you're going to start at 5 o'clock and hope to eat at 6. You already put a lot of time into it, so just give it another 20 minutes for your meat to rest, and then enjoy it. So cover it up. See you guys in about 10 when we add our carrots, 
and then our add our cabbage. And happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes that we added our potatoes to our corned beef. And uh, I checked right before I turned the camera on, and we're almost there. So at this point, we're going to add our last two things. First, the carrots. As you see, our liquid has reduced a lot, but it's not completely dry. I'm just making a little bit of room here for the carrots. Uh, that is going to be part of the serving or the final uh, product, the, the juice of it. So you want you want there to be some. If there was none right now, uh, you would probably be in trouble, but you want it to uh, always keep an eye on it. So if you have to add a little bit of water, you can. So I'm just going to add my carrots. And uh, in about three minutes or so we're going to add the final ingredient which is our cabbage and then we're going to let it cook for about five minutes and then we're going to let our meat rest for a few and then we're going to plate so i'll see you guys uh, when i add the cabbage all right our carrots have been there for about six minutes they're almost tender and now the last part is going to be the cabbage which basically just needs to steam so we're going to lay it on top at this point nothing is or the cabbage is not going to be able to be submerged in liquid or anything but that's okay because we have the liquid that's still there. And I, with the cabbage, all I did was cut it in wedges. And don't worry if it's on top because we're going to cover this up. And I also noticed that our liquid was, liquid was a little bit low. There's still a good amount, but just to make sure that we're good, I'm going to add about a half a cup of liquid in there. And then I'm going to cover it up and uh, let it cook for about five minutes and then I'm going to remove the corned beef out and then leave all the veggies and the broth in here and uh, I'm going to allow the corned beef to rest for a good 15 minutes before we try to slice it and then I'll see you back in the counter when we plate everything, the corned beef, the potatoes, the cabbage, the carrots and don't forget about the aioli, the parsley aioli that we made earlier. So I'll see you guys over there on the counter in a couple of minutes. Alright, here we are. Our corned beef is out. It cooked for about three hours and he, I, I, it was hard because I love this stuff to let it sit, but we let it sit for a good 25 minutes. Our potatoes are fully cooked. Our cabbage is cooked, but it still looks like cabbage. That's one of the complaints I have with somebody else or some other people make this dish is that they throw in the cabbage with the carrots and the potatoes and the meat and three hours later they wonder why is the cabbage so mushy. It's because, you know, you're trying to do things on steps. But uh, So here's our meat. Uh, like any meat that we're going to slice, we're going to slice it with a sharp knife and against the grain because if you cut it with the grain, you're going to get shreds and it's going to look like shredded beef. We want it to maintain its, uh, its cut. And then this one, you slice it, you know, however thin or thick you want it. I like it somewhere in between. Not too thin, not too thick. We're doing this uh, family style, um, a traditional um, accoutrement, which is fancy for sauce that comes with something is like whole green mustard from our I'm not Irish as you can tell I'm just wearing a green t-shirt but uh, green or whole green mustard is something that comes with it uh, by all means if you like that which I love mustard it, it would probably be really good with it uh, but we also have our uh, parsley aioli that we made so that's my suggestion for this it's green it's tasty uh, but I want you to see how juicy it is still and it looks like I bought it I know, at an Irish market, uh, but I didn't. We made it ourselves here. It was a one pot wonder, which is my favorite kind of meal. meal. And I'm going to slice a little bit more. And then I'm going to turn the plate around so you can see how wonderful it looks. So this is easily enough food for probably six to eight people. Um, and uh, you can make like a cool Reuben sandwich next day with it. I'm going to clean my hands a little bit. I mean, it's pretty impressive. You'll see it right now. So this is our corned beef, our baby potatoes, red potatoes, and then our baby carrots right here. The cabbage is in the back. And then we have our au jus, which is the reduction of the beef broth and the Guinness, which is now obviously all infused with the beef that we just cooked in there. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit on top of the meat. Not much. You can always serve it on the side. And then I wanted to show you the, the aioli because the aioli works really well with the potatoes as well. So I'm just going to scoop a little bit of the aioli so you can dip it in there and also becomes part of your plate. So I'm just going to put it probably here and uh, 
and it's creamy and refreshing and it's got that touch of lemon juice which makes it uh, you know a little bit bright this is a pisco sour which I'm going to show you how to make soon today we were just cooking and got thirsty so it has nothing to do with Ireland ah, and then this is our fresh parsley that we chopped don't go crazy with the parsley we have a lot of uh, green elements in here we just had some cut up there and that's basically our dish so it's our corned beef cabbage baby potatoes baby carrots and uh, I think it's going to be a good one because everything is in one pot it does take some time to build but it's very tasty and this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode but I wanted to show you all the steps and why I do it the way I do it so please try it at home this is the perfect season for corned beef and cabbage and come see me again chef Luis Sanchez at a seat at my table and uh, subscribe uh, see you guys soon happy St. Patrick's Day.